Well, ladies and dudes, is that time once again for another top six list that nobody has never done before. And also, today is my 18th anniversary of the day when I graduated. So a top six list will be a perfect choice that I really want to do for this video of the day. And it's all about good films that are truly very darn close into a near masterpiece film. Just close. Well, you know what I mean. Well, anyway, hi ladies and dudes. This is Rebecca Lynn Barkley, aka Boobop 1987. This is my review for a day. And today, I have no review, ladies and dudes, but for today's list, ladies and dudes, Another top six list has finally been born. And I really, really, really want to do this list so darn badly. And I thought about this idea for a couple of years or so, but I didn't have time to make one yet. Well, until this very day. So, for today's top six list of the day is the top six most greatest near masterpiece films of all time. The one that's 9.5 out of 10 or four and a half stars. And these near masterpiece films really did blew me away from start to finish with the characters, the story, the animation, live action, comedy, drama, romance, thriller or any of the genres that you like it's way too hard for me to explain about these wonderful films that really did blew me away for so many years and it's way too hard for me to pick which, which one of these films is truly the best near masterpiece ones of all. Okay. Let's get this whole thing started. For right now. Okay. Without further ado, ladies and dudes. Let's head on to the top six best near masterpiece films that I enjoyed the best for so many years. And yes, ladies and dudes, I do have a couple of honorable mentions. Here's the ones I got in my collection. The Chronicles of Narnia. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Taken to... Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. And the Little Mermaid. And also, some of the stuff I don't have in my collection... Like, um, My Neighbor, my neighbor Totoro, Moroni Catch in the Beginning, Gundam Sea Freedom, Batman the, 19, the 1989 version, and Snow White and the Huntsman. So, those are the ones that did not make it to the list. And now, on with the list. Coming at number six has to go to the Incredible Hulk. <sighs> One of the most underrated Marvel films of all time. At least this movie's a lot better than the ones that came from in the later on time in the MCU universe. You know, some of the movies that are completely sucks right now. Well, some movies that are way too hard to explain. But this movie deserves to be the best. And this is the most underrated storytelling type of a Marvel film that I have ever seen in my whole entire life. This movie is so darn well done, very well detailed, and I do love the character design of the Incredible Hulk. Definitely much better than the Mark Ruffalo's Incredible Hulk or er Eric Bana's Hulk. Well, if you pay attention to those designs of the Incredible Hulk, but I like this one the best. <sighs> The reason why this one is a near masterpiece film is I'm worried about that poor Tim guy. The guy who played the main villain of the film. At least I do like his role, the performance, and the character. 
of, you know, he played the main villain of the movie. But my major problem I have with that guy is he's a bit too skinny. I thought he might be a muscular dude. Well, for what I've seen here and there in the film. But what are you gonna do? I really love this movie. It's a great near masterpiece of a film. And I wish this movie should deserve more love more than ever. If you know what I mean. So I put that at number six. Whoops. I messed things up. Okay. Coming at number five goes to Spider-Man No Way Home. And this is one of the best nostalgia movies of all time. It does have a whole lot of nostalgia moments. But I will say the best part I love about this movie is really Dr. Octopus, a.k.a. Otto One. He's the real show stealer of the movie. And he released so many big lip alligator moments that nobody will never forget in movie history. And there's a lot of big lip alligator moments to be found in this film. Something that all of you need to point out. <sighs> yeah, the reason why this movie is a near masterpiece is... Well, it's good and all, but the villains are the weakest point in the movie. Well, except for Electro, I will let that dude slide. But the Green Goblin was really the weakest villain for me, since I have no idea what his storyline is all about from start to finish, since the role in the performance from Will Defoe is pretty darn good, but it's the storyline that bothered me the most. And I feel bad for Sandman and Lizardman. Those guys have no storyline at all for this film. Sadly to say. But overall, I enjoy this movie for what it is, and it deserves to be at number five. Coming at number four has to go to Belle. I love Belle. It's such a great movie and the only animated film that I will add on this list. It's a beautiful epic storytelling of a movie that's mixed with Beauty and the Beast and Ready Player One. This is a great mixturing movie. It's very well done, very well detailed. It has good 2D hand-drawn animation and 3D alike. And I just love the climax of the film. The climax really did blew me away the most. But the reason why it's a near masterpiece for me is I wish they should give more character development and chemistry between Belle and the Beast. I want to see a little bit more of a Beauty and the Beast storyline to this film. If you know this movie too well, and it's also pretty underrated as well. I love this movie to death, and I put it at the number four spot. Coming at number three goes to John Wick Chapter 3, Pantavellum. This is a pure epic storytelling of a movie. And one of the best action thriller films I have ever watched in my whole entire life. It's a very fun and enjoyable movie to watch. Yeah, wild and crazy. And the best part I love about this movie is the underwater sequence. Yeah, John Wick has to go to underwater for just a couple of seconds to kill a bad guy in a swimming pool. It was just... Pure epicness. I love its epic storytelling. Yeah, I will say the reason why it has to be a near masterpiece film for me is... What the hell happened to John Lake Wazamo's character? They never fully mention him in this movie. Not one single bit of that dude. If I know him, he was too busy working on John Wick's car. And try to fix it all up. I wonder what the hell happened to that character. Why they never mention him in this movie? It does suck. Big time. And that's why John Wick Chapter 3, Pendavellum, has to be at number 3. Darn it, I don't have this movie. 
But sadly, it's in the library, and I'm, one day I'll have to go back and get it again. So for number two goes to Angels and Demons. One of the best Tom Hanks movies of all time. And truly one of the best underrated films he ever, ever made in his whole entire career. And yes, out of all the Robert Landon films, all three of them, I did see all three. I will do Da Vinci Cole very, very soon whenever I can get there. Out of all the three, three films I did see about Robert Landon, The Angels, uh, strike that, reverse it. The Angels and Demons is one of the best movies I have ever watched in my whole entire life. And this movie had pure epic storytelling. And it's very well done, very well fast paced. And I love the moments that happen in the second half of the movie. Even the part where uh, Tom Hanks had dressed up as a priest. Since he looks so freaking hot as a priest. <sighs> yeah, the saddest part about that movie is... Well, well, Robert disguised himself as a priest. I wonder why the CIA's, FBI's, cops, whatever... I wonder why they never thought about the idea about Robert becoming a priest for just this whole night and whole, this one night only. They never called him Father Robert or Priest Robert. I'm not sure what the hell what they were thinking back then. And yeah, it will be nice if Robert should just change his wet clothes into dry ones before he continue on his mission to try to get the job done and find that mysterious bomb that came out of nowhere that will go kaboom in Rome. And yes, this movie also featured a good plot twist and a couple of big lip alligator moments that happened one time and one time only and it never happened again. That's for sure. Angels and Demons has to be a number two. We already know what number one is. We'll always be Taken, the first one. Taken is the best near epic masterpiece of a film of all time. And yes, this movie has pure epic storytelling. That featured our man, Brian Mills, who's going on a quest to find his beloved daughter, in the dangerous world in Paris, France. And yeah, Brian Mills is the best show-stealing character of all time in movie history. And one, of, and one of the best films that Liam Neeson have ever worked on for so many years. Well, if this movie will ever become a great masterpiece, and it deserves a 10 out of 10. One of the scenes I really want to see in this movie, I want to see a part where Lenore needs to apologize to Brian Mills after everything that happened from a couple of days ago and also making a bad decision of letting Kim go to a place that's completely dangerous for her. And also... It's really her fault that she betrayed both of those two characters since it's her fault that she tore her family apart. And she doesn't want to do anything bad to them. Strike that, reverse it. She doesn't want to do anything bad to her loved ones ever again for the rest of her life. Yeah. I just wish the apology scene should be there in Taken 1, and maybe that way it deserves to have a masterpiece rating. That's for sure. That's why Taken deserves to be the number one best near masterpiece film of all time, period. And those were my top six most favorite near masterpiece movies that I have ever enjoyed in movie history. And tell me, ladies and dudes, what is your favorite near masterpiece film of all time in your own opinion? Well, whichever it is, leave a comment there and let me know. 
And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and do all the important things in YouTube. And don't forget to say, wish me a happy anniversary of the day when I graduated. Well, if you know me too well. So, I'll see you all later. It's sayonara.